in Israel. Ain't God all right? David was from Judah, from Bethlehem, Judah. But then Jonathan was from the tribe of Benjamin. Can you see where I'm going? Ain't God all right? Jonathan is the next in line to be king, anointed king over Israel, but David is going to take his place. Ain't God all right? But now I can tell you this. There is no greater friendship the world has ever known than the friendship of Jonathan and David. It's arguably the best friendship the world has ever known. Is Jonathan and David. Can you imagine somebody that's in line to be a king and then they friends with somebody going to take their place? Oh, ain't God all right. I wonder how many of you in here could admonish somebody that you feel like you older than. Jonathan is older than David, but David is his hero. You don't see that too often in our society, that your hero is younger than you. You look at a little young, young buck can't tell me nothing. Ain't God all right? But they had some commonality. Commonality was they both had faith in God and they had courage as warriors they had a commonality and David knew that when he saw Saul the very first time David knew that Saul had a problem but then Jonathan the very first time he saw David he just looked like he just latched on through to him through his spirit. See, sometimes you all think friendship comes because I live two, you know, we're friends because we live two houses away. We're friends because we went to the same college. We're friends because the very first time I met them, we said, they said some things that connected with me. You know, friendship. It's just like philosophy and art. It has no survival value. Uh-oh. But, on the other hand, the value of friendship brings value to survival. Uh-oh. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Friendships bring value to survival. If you want to survive, then you need somebody in your life that can promote you and help you and give you power and strengthen you. Ain't God all right? To encourage you. Somebody say, I don't need nobody. Let me tell you, that's a lie from the pits of hell. I would never say, I don't need nobody. Let me tell you, I've heard people, I've seen people walk away and said, Pastor Harold's up there talking, I'm walking out of church. But then I get in the hospital, and they in the hospital room, and I go in there and I begin to pray and they hear my voice. And then they'll come back to me and later and tell me, Pastor Harold, it's something about it. I heard your voice in the prayer that you gave in the hospital, and it brought me back. This is the living testimony. I'm telling you that God, heaven, truth. They said, I'm just, just glad just to hear your voice. It woke me up. The power of friendship is unbelievable. You can't neglect it. It's not just like family love. This is filial, but it's a spiritual thing. It is not just because you live two blocks away. God says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. You don't choose your friends, God chooses your friends. 
Y'all better hear me in here this morning. You don't choose your friends. God chooses your friends. Because the Bible says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And he puts the right people in your life to strengthen you. The Bible said, Jonathan, strengthen David. Even though David was taking his position, that's a spiritual friendship. He went to him in the field, in the hill, and strengthened him. Ain't God all right? If you're a good friend, you're going to strengthen somebody. A good friend is going to be true. A good friend is going to be right there when you need them. Ain't God all right? You can't tell me, I go to church and I go, I just don't talk to nobody in there. You, something wrong with you. I'm not going to church and not talk to nobody. I want to have a church where I feel like I'm, I'm a part of a family. I want to have a church where I feel like somebody's going to pray for me. I want to have a church where I feel like love is there. I want to have a church where I feel like people love each other and people care about each other and people are going to be there when I need them. Yes, I need God, but God works through people. He doesn't have any hands. He doesn't have any feet. He doesn't, he doesn't work with the mind. He just supply the people with what they need and the resources that they need so they can help one another. Look at your neighbor and say, we got to help one another. Can I preach in you today like I feel? The power of friendship. Look at your neighbor and say, it's, it, it's power when we connect it. What, two or three are gathered together, I'll be in the midst. Any two touching and agreeing on any one thing, it shall be done. If you pray with me today, you'll get a blessing. Grab hands with somebody and say, if you pray with me, you're going to be blessed. Look at them and tell them, if you believe it, you can receive it. You know, we've all heard that epic story of David killing Goliath. Have y'all heard that story? David killed Goliath, but Jonathan, look at Jonathan. Jonathan not only killed no one giant. I talked to you last Sunday about Jonathan. He moved out on faith. Jonathan killed 20 Philistines at one time. Yet, he looking up to David. Yet he's encouraging David. Yet he's a friend with David. And David is trying to take his position in the kingdom. And yet he's saying David is the man. You can't get so jealous of somebody you can't help them. You can't get so jealous. How are you going to be a friend when you're hating on somebody? I'm a friend, but yet you're talking to another person saying, girl, she, she told me, you know, you know, that's my friend, but I don't think she's going to make it. That ain't your friend. You need to be telling her, my girl going to do it. My girl going to make it. My man, that's my boy. He going to do it. He got what it takes to do it. It's in him. It was born in him. He got it on his life. He's anointed. He's appointed. And God got a blessing for my friend. First Samuel 17 and 50. David prevailed over Goliath. He killed that Philistine. But Jonathan in the Bible chapter 1 Samuel 14 and 14 look what Jonathan done. He done done more than David. And that first slaughter with Jonathan and his bell barrel made was about 20 men. He done killed 20 men. He got a reason to be proud. And, who is David? Talking about he's going to be king. And I killed 420 men. How are they going to promote him? Y'all better help me here. He don't have the education I got. I'm a skilled warrior. I've been trained in the art of war. He could have had that personality. He could have got envious. He could have had that jealous spirit. 
But guess what? He didn't. Just because somebody else looked like they doing something, it doesn't give you no right to try to tear them down. If you can't build them up, don't say nothing at all. The best thing to do is just step back and watch God. Because if God is in it, they're going to... It's going to work out. If God ain't in it, it ain't going to work out. Everything that God got his hands on, how many know it's going to... If God got his hands on you, you don't worry about nobody else. You don't worry about what people say. You don't worry about who said they were your friend and they're not your friend. Don't worry about them. Everything is going to be all right because you got God on your side. But I love Jonathan. I love Jonathan because I love promoting people. I don't, I don't, I don't get angry when I see somebody to get something new. I don't get upset when I, 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 I preach in here. I want everybody in here to be successful. That's why I preach so hard. I, I, I want you to look good. I want you to dress good. I want you to be the best dressed person on your pew if you want to be. It's what you want out of life. Whatever you want out of life, that's what you're going to get out of life. And I'm here as a friend. I, I'm to promote. Oh, that's what you want. Do what's in your heart. I don't know why she bought that hair. I know you don't know why. She got her own personal reason why she bought it. It don't work for you. But you need to tell her, baby, I don't know why you bought it. I, I, I'm just going to tell you to your face. I'm going to be talking about anybody. I don't know why you bought it. But if that works for you, keep on working it. Whatever works for you, keep on working it. Because that may not be me, but that may be you. Because if that's you, I'm here to support you. Kind of look at somebody and say, I'm, 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 I'm very supportive of you. Whether you know it or not, I, I may be sitting here on this pew looking funny, but I'm very supportive of you. I love how you handle yourself, girl. Ain't God all right? High five somebody and say, it's, it's exciting to be here today. Yes. And then in 14 and 16, Jonathan says, and, 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 the, and the watchmen of Saul, of Gibeah Benjamin, looked and behold, the multitude melted away. What happened was when he killed these 20 men, Saul was able to subdue the whole multitude. And that, that, that's awesome what Jonathan did. But the thing is, this is an unlikely friendship. Isn't this an unlikely friendship? For somebody that you are, you grew up in a palace, they grew up as a little shepherd boy in a field, and you in a palace, and, and you're, the, you're the oldest son of your father, and he's the king. You're in next in line to be king. He is the youngest son of eight brothers and a shepherd boy and he's getting ready to take your position he's getting ready to take your position as the king now this same young man Jonathan says in this verse right here Jonathan says to David David, I'm gonna, you're going to be king. You're going to be king. Isn't that something? For somebody to say, you're going to be king. I'm your friend. And I, I'm, 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 I'm a friend. I love you just like I love myself. Isn't that something? When you love a friend like that, that would love you like they love themselves. Looking, looking at First Samuel uh, 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 17, 57. 17, 57. And they turned and slaughtered. Listen, Abner took him and brought him before Saul with the head of the Philistine in his hand. 
And that's when Jonathan fell in love with David. He connected with him in his spirit. As a friend, you got to connect in the spirit. You don't connect on the outside. Outward appearance don't make friendship. You got to connect in the spirit. Somebody shout glory. Somebody said there's power in friendship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A true friend in Proverbs 17 and 17 says these words. A friend love at all times. In the midst of your situation, they love at all times, and a brother is born for adversity. But a friend will love at all times. I'm talking about somebody that connects in your spirit. They're going to love you regardless. They're going to be there regardless. But sometimes family won't be there. But a friend will come to your rescue. Sometimes family done grew up and fussed so much and, and, and hating on each other so much until you better have your friend. You ain't got no friend, you ain't gonna make it. Ain't God all right? Somebody say, I need a true friend. And I believe every born again believer, you ought to be a true friend. I don't need you to leave here today and talk about me. If you're going to talk about me, talk about how good I am. Talk about how good I look. Talk about how good I spoke. And talk about how good God is and how wonderful it is and what a pleasant environment we have. Talk about all the good stuff and motivate each other, empower each other, strengthen one another because Jonathan went and strengthened David even though his own daddy was out to kill David. He snuck away and said, he's my friend. I won't kill him. I won't let him get killed. I'm here for you, David. I'm on your side, David. And I want to make a covenant relationship with you. He says that uh, I'm going to be with you regardless. Even when you die. You die before me and I die before you. You take care of my descendants. You take care of my children, I'll take care of your children. Hallelujah. Ain't God all right? First Samuel 4 and 4. And I'm getting on, going to my seat. The time is winding up. My wife patting on her watch. <laughs> Ain't God all right? I'm going. Jonathan saw, Jonathan saw a son, had a son, and was lame at his feet. He was five years old, and when the tidings came up, out of saw Jonathan out of Jezreel, and his nurse took him, and he died, and he died. Jonathan's son died. Jonathan died, but his son was dropped and got lame. His name was Mephibosheth. When David got to be king, he remembered what happened. He knew they was friends. He knew they was friends. He said, we're friends, and I'll take care of your siblings. He went and found that young boy down in Lodabar and brought him to the king's table and took care of his son. Jonathan was dead, but they, they, David said we had a covenant relationship, a spiritual relationship, and he put him at his table, and he, had, he ate at the king's table. That's the kind of friend we have in Jesus. Stand on your feet. That's the kind of friend we have in Jesus. And you can talk about time all you want to. We can have all the festivities you want to. But the word of God is more important than any gift. Than anything you have. You can get all the gifts in the world and don't have the word of God. That gift ain't going to do you no good. We walk out of here not loving each other and caring about each other. It doesn't work like that. If we're on our way to heaven, heaven is a place where love is. God loves every one of you. 
He sent his only son. And we got to love each other. Why this community in turmoil and we killing one another? Why is so much gun violence going on? Love have left the community, have left the home, is spreading out in the community. Don't let it leave the church. Lift your hands to heaven. Lift your hands to heaven. Thank God, all right. Tell him thank you right now. Whoa, whoa.